So can I move article uh, for the uh, International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Local 633? Yes, that, okay, that's the one I just handed out first. I'll hand them out one at a time so we don't get confused. So, Barbara, we have a motion by Tim Jones and seconded by Mr. Henderson. Um, so, Jamie, go ahead, please. How would you like to proceed? Do you want to read through the Warren article directly, or you're fine waving that? And I'll just get right um, to the, Tim, the, the details. You? I consider it read as written. Read as written, okay. And, and I'd be happy if you just go over the absolute high points of the essence of this contract. How short do you want them? Short as you can make it and still be sensible. So, the Teamsters, as you globally, I'll tell you that there are several things we dealt with for all of this, uh, and they are um, colas, raises. Uh, and this is for all three of the units on Real Quick Global. Um, and we dealt with some insurance issues that are in there, health insurance issues. Again, the big things that the board has been focused on and those back committee has been working on, our team has been working on, is dealing with uh, the ACA Cadillac tax issue, a transition from uh, a health care, or I should say a prescription plan, that's no longer going to be offered. We had to transition folks off of that to something different. Uh, and a couple other minor things each. So I'll start with the Teamsters. The Teamsters contract that was settled is for a three-year term, for calls for 333. Um, there are some language issues that we changed that dealt with the recognition clause, the disciplinary procedure, no cost issues with those. Um, these health insurance, as we discussed, all of our units, we've been transitioning the opt-out provision. That is, if you choose to come off of the town's insurance, uh, we will give you a stipend for doing so. We've increased that from what it currently is to 2000 3000 or 4000 for a single double family. Um, those plans range anywhere from a low of, say, 10000 to a high of close to thirty. So we thought that was a good idea. Uh, the Cadillac tax, we talked about this previously. Cadillac tax is a part of the ACA. And what that says is it identifies, uh, it's still law, it's, it's been kicked down the road a little bit, but we felt it was very important to protect the taxpayers should um, that, that tax hit. It was unclear who that would hit, and in all likelihood it would have been shared by the town. So it's very important for us to negotiate a protection in there for the town. <coughs> what we've done in each of the units is basically uh, got an agreement that says if the ACA should hit, we have a high tax plan or a high Cadillac tax plan that, that triggers. Uh, either the member would choose to stay on that plan and pay 100% of that tax, or they would move to a plan that's below that number and not implicate the tax. In either position, it saves the town. Um, in addition, again, as I talked about, it's the transition. These guys, I, I misspoke at the beginning, it's a three-year term with the Teamsters for 272727, two, not 333. Three. I apologize. Questions on that? I was gonna I was gonna comment that I'm looking at the back page and it's two point seven. Yeah, thank you. And I also noticed that the uh, last year you were presenting this not last year, last night you were presenting it to the board of selectmen. We did. And I noticed now that it's been signed off. It was I, signed off previously. It was as well. Yes. Okay, and agreed yes. upon. Yep. Um, okay, so So last night was a ratification by them. Both Teamsters and Fire have both ratified oh, pardon me, I'm doing it again. Uh, Fire and SEA have already ratified by their unions. The Teamsters have yet to do so. Okay, okay. good. Thank you. Uh, any any co questions or comments? Uh, um, David, go ahead first, please. Yeah, yeah. Could you help me understand, um, in reference to these contracts that get done with the, the union, who negotiates with the union from the town's standpoint? Right, so the, the board, yeah, the, there's a team of us. The board appoints the team. I was the lead negotiator for the team and involved Mr. Bean. Um, uh, Attorney Gerald, myself, and Ms. Barnes joined us for a number of the sessions as well. So that's the team that negotiates for the town. The board sets their goals <coughs> and gives direction to the team. We meet with the union who has their representatives that their union appoints and often have many times an attorney that, that comes in with them. And we go back and forth on our issues. It takes months to do so, and we go back and forth and come to what you see in front of you here, which is referred to as a tentative agreement. Process-wise, that then goes back to each of those groups. That we go back to the board for approval. They go back to their union for approval. Once those are there, we come before the, the, the voters. That's basically the process. What I've noticed, I was here last year, mm -hmm. a lot of Teamsters or whatever union, whatever you want to call them, the groups, the unions, were 3% through all the different various employees, firemen, policemen, uh, the number three percent. At the same time, we had brought up the fact about Social Security. We for like the past four years, a lot of people there was no increase at all. There was one this past year for two percent, but before that, it was nothing and nothing and nothing. So if you add that out, you're getting about 
there's a certain number of people in Hampton, for example, who basically probably have fifty percent of their income coming from so people over sixty five. I'm just referring to. In in today's world of the low inf inflation, being as as low as it is, and the low interest you're getting, to me, it, it, like for example, I think what what I heard that the the, the, the selectmen did last year, they actually lowered a, a I think it was a two percent down a. 1.7 or something of that. 1.65 was the 1. raise that was given to non-union members. That's yeah. correct. The young union is 1.65, and a lot of the people in union are getting either 3 percent, or this year it's better than 3 percent. It's like 2 percent. Why were they always getting much higher than the average person? It, it's like their raises are going up like this, and everybody else is like this. Well, so there are a couple of things that that go into that equation. First, as we talked about last year, keep in mind that for I think it was approximately six years, the unions went with no raises. So you looked over that 10-year period. Without no raises? Six, six years, years, contracts were negotiated. They failed. And it was about six or seven years they went with zero. <coughs> so you're looking over that longer 10-year period. We talked about this last year. So we'll take that union discussion. That's something for folks to consider across there. Um, we now are back to, if you look across the state, these are, these are numbers that are fairly standard across the state, depending on your benefit packages and what have you. We found, and the board's direction was, they found these were reasonable numbers. That's what we went forward with. With regard to the non-union, the board directed this year, and we're in the middle of doing a salary study. When they looked at salaries, they said, okay, we're going to go with that 165 this year, but we want to go do a study and see how competitive our numbers are. That's underway now. Good. We're going to see the results of that in the coming month or so, um, and then I suspect the board will take that information next year and act on it. And I suspect, based on the preliminary data, you'll find that a number of the positions in those non-union are below market level. Below market level. And then it'll be up to the board to decide whether to address it, and if so, how much we'll choose to address that. Thank okay, you. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. All set, David. Yes. Okay, thank you. You know, it's interesting that you ask um, the people that are in the union are getting 2.7 or whatever, 3% in the non-union people. I guess that's why they're in a union. <laughs> so well, they can have many, somebody negotiate for them. You there know? are many other factors. All right. Oh, there, keep in oh, mind, our, our union groups, you have the two, the, the three or well, five, it's the police, fire, uh, SEA, public works, and then the Teamsters, which covers a myriad of folks, right? Great. A lot of those folks... You know, very high risk, high uh, demand jobs. I worked one of those for many years. I, mm -hmm. I sit at a desk. I don't have that same level of risk that the guy pushing a cruiser or that person running in to save someone or doing an ambulance fall. Those are different issues. And, and those employees, that is the board's direction to us, has been to go in and negotiate those in a reasonable way. And that's what I think we've achieved. And I, I want to also point out that... Um, at least one of these is left over from last year that didn't pass. Am I correct? Um, actually, all three failed last year. Oh, Teamsters is in their second year of, of failure. Passed. The fire officers, which is next, they failed last year, and okay. so did SEA. I, okay, I Teamsters is on two two years in a row. I think that's one of the reasons you see 2727, and there were other things in there previously that were removed. Okay. Um, <coughs> that it's a straightforward 27 plus the insurance issues that are beneficial to both sides, especially the town. Okay, I stand okay. corrected. Thank you very much. Um, Steve Henderson, you've had your hand Yeah, I'll make it real minutes. brief. Um, this group here, the Teamsters, you know, the last several years, uh, they have failed. Sometimes I think it's because of the, I want to throw it out there, the Teamster name. But this is a hard-working group of individuals that work in this town, you know. It's a various group, you know. They're hard-working. They're probably some of the lower-paid skill um, employees of this town. And they deserve a raise. It's been, it's been many years since they've gotten one, and they deserve it. They're hard-working. And uh, hopefully the uh, taxpayers will see through it, and not the teams to name. But let's look at the individuals that are in this group. Let's look at the groups, and let's vote for them. So hopefully... Uh, this group will uh, get a raise this year because they deserve it. And if I can add on to that, to, to Mr. Henderson's point, Teamsters is also fairly unique in that they're spread out across a number of different parts of our town, you know, and, and it is we have police dispatchers in there and some of the civilian employees in the police department are in there. Folks in the town office and some of the senior folks, the management folks or supervisory, senior supervisory folks down at Public Works. Sometimes that, I think, works against them as well because they're, they're, they're a spread out group. They're very focused this year. They understand what they need to do. They're going to try and get their message out. I think it's important for all of us to support that as well. 
Um, and so I, I completely agree with Mr. Henderson said that there's some challenges there that I think we all can do uh, a lot to help uh, get that message out and let the voters decide. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Tim, you had your hand up. <coughs> Steve, are you done? I'm done. Okay. Tim, you had your hand up. Please. Yeah, that's what we're here for is to help the voters decide. Up, or, up or down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I mentioned the contracts, them being a little contract for like a 10-year period. Uh, no, I did mention a contract 10-year period. I mentioned a period of time. In which there was no contract. Correct. Right. And that period of time was like... Uh, it ended around 2012, didn't it? That sounds about right. I don't have the data in front of me, but that yeah. sounds about right. Right. So it was it was kind of like 2002, 2006 to 2012, and then they started getting contracts done. In fact, that's when the cost of negotiating the contracts went from 100,000 plus per year to 20,000 dollars or less per year. Right around 2012, and negotiating the cost of that. Uh, yeah, negotiating. Yeah, negotiating. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the legal fees actually is something the board's talked about a number of times. Um, the legal fees were pretty substantial for a number of years in those negotiations that went on for a long period of time. Right, during that, during that void when no. there was no contract, well, there were a lot of grievances filed. There were a lot of non-contracts. They weren't even negotiated for Right, there were grievances filed during that period. Not many, actually. 2008. Eight is when it stopped or yeah. started? 2008 is when the first failed. Right, and then went on for a six-year period. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, just wanted to get that cleared. Uh, we've been out of that phase for quite some time. We have? Yeah, so... It really isn't in play but, presently. But to the question of comparing to year after year, we felt last year, that was discussed about last year, we talked about that time period last year we did that comparison. And that's one of the reconsiderations the board took into effect of dealing with these issues, mm -hmm. dealing with our employees. When the contract started getting en enacted, they got, you know, um, you know eight, ten-year step increases all in one shot. Uh, so they were brought up, to, brought up to speed pretty quickly once the contract got, uh, got going again, got, got approved again around 2012, 2013 time frame. That would be and your so, opinion. I don't know that I would agree with that, but that's, uh, that's your opinion. Well, they, they, they seem to agree because they, they agreed with those contracts. That, that they satisfied. did? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, I noticed in, in here that, uh, first of all, the Teamsters, which is what we're talking about right now, Teamsters right. Local 633, uh, this is also the union that uh, the uh, clerks in the town clerk's office that is correct. are yes. under, right? And, and a number of people are under this, as we said, it's a diverse Others group. Others as well. Yeah. Very diverse yeah. group. Right. Now, is there, we don't have the contract in front of us, of course. We just have the TA, which These is fine. Are, if I can, what you have, the tentative agreement, I understand. are yeah. those items that would be changed, changed. in the contract. Right. That's it. So I have a question about the existing situation. Was this going quick enough for you, or is this taking longer now? Oh, no, I'm, I'm very rapid. 35 hours. Is that defined anywhere? What is the what is full time defined as in the teams' contract? Uh, I'd have to pull the contract out. I'd have to pull that out. Uh, but there's a in the town. The town handbook generally sets what it is. Most places people think of forty hours. Most contracts that's the case. Right. I understand this came up. Quite frankly, I have to read that to be sure. Uh, the town had defined uh, a, a part time and full time in one of their policies as thirty five. Very few people fall. Oh, it's thirty five hours. A department did. You know, the town of Hampton's personnel policies, uh -huh. and they had their setup of, of it, it said above thirty five hours. So there are some employees that are thirty five hours defined as full time. Um, so. With regard to specifically to your question, I can get back to you. I don't have that in front of me, and off the top of my head, I don't want to answer you correctly. Okay. You don't believe it's in the contract, but you want to confirm that before you say no, definitively. No, I, I have right? to look into the contract to be sure. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman, can we uh, expect uh, to uh, get that information to you, distributed to the entire budget committee, hopefully uh, as a Christmas present? How's that? Okay. We'd like it soon because you, you're saying we're, with we're regard to only the Teamsters. Uh, well, is. actually, I think the question applies to all the contracts. I'm just, just the topic, to as you know, it came up about the Teamsters. So the Teamsters are the ones that we're most sensitive to right now. That's what we're talking but about. But we'd like to know universally as well. Sure. Okay. Um, and I also want to note this this uh, change um, sentence here, which is in the TA. The current <laughs> positions will remain non-union positions <laughs> until the current employees vacate those positions. Mm -hmm. So if if a department head moves a person that is presently non-union into a pre-existing non-union position, 
then that becomes a union position, is that right? No. In this particular case, there are certain positions that, in a contract, uh, there is a ratification, there is a clause, a recognition Recognition, clause. That clause spells out who's covered, right? right? In the Teamster contract, there were certain positions that were spelled out. At some point along the way, some of those positions, which are identified in the recognition clause, came out of that to be non-union. Right. There is a specific process by law that has to be followed in order for that to occur. There's no record of that taking place. Right. What we're doing here is rectifying that issue by saying, look, that happened. We both agree it happened. Uh, there's no real record of it. We're going to comply with the contract's original intent and restore that so it's very clear. That's yeah, what I'm not is. objecting to it. I want to understand it. I'm I, want, to I want to understand it with a hypothetical because I'm too simple. I need an example. Okay. So we've got a person that's in a presently non-union position, right? And they're moved into a non-union position that's actually now specified that can be become union if someone populates it, right? Let me give you this. The, the way it actually happened, Tim, you are in a position that is covered by a union contract. No, that's not the example I'm using. I understand. I'm trying to explain to you what happened so it's clear to folks. So you're in a position, or person A is in a position that was covered by a union contract. There's a decision made and no actions taken to take your position and you and move you into a non-union role. There's a process required by law to do that that wasn't followed. What we're doing is now saying, look, we recognize that that process wasn't followed. We're going to correct that. But instead of spilling the apple cart, we all recognize that didn't happen. We all recognize that that has to be repaired. We're going to wait until you leave your position before we restore it back to the union position so that there's no change. Everybody understands it's coming, all that sort of stuff. So that's how we address that issue. Right. So when someone comes in to fill my now vacant position, they instantly become union. That, that position is restored as it was under the recognition clause and is recognized as a union position, yes. Right. Unless the town and that, that union decide to negotiate it out of the recognition clause. Yeah, this, this has serious implications in, in terms of both the full-time definition and why the town clerk is moving a person from bookkeeper to senior bookkeeper and then to assistant town clerk. Because I think by doing so, she's actually causing those positions to instantly become unionized, which is what she said she was trying to do. And that is the mechanism by answers the question, why is she doing that? I think that might be the reason. We'll probably need to have her back in to explain that. But first, we need to get a definition of what full-time well, means to be clear, in the, the team's the, the, contract. What you just said. I said, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, and to yeah. be clear, that is not correct. Okay, we'll find out. Well, I just told you it's not correct. No, I'm going to find out from Those Jane. positions are currently union positions. In one case, she is intending basically to promote one person in the union to another union position <coughs> and hire somebody oh, into that position. I thought she said they were not union. No, that's my, that's, that's my understanding of what they she, are. She yeah. didn't say that? Okay, well, yeah. we'll get it cleared up eventually. Sorry? She said they were union. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll get it cleared up eventually. Well, maybe you'll but, understand it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do. Good. So the key is getting the definition for full time. I thank you, Jamie. Happy I look forward to the Christmas present. Good for you. Okay, just to be clear, so you're going to send me something? He's There's a question with regard to what the contract says and defined in, on full time. I'll look that up and be happy to send get it back to, to you. Me and then They're I'll online. They can be looked at by anybody, but I'll be happy to look that up. If you send that to me, Jamie, sure. only, then I will make sure it's distributed to everybody else. And before Sonny, um, I want to ask one question that occurred to me the other night because of this the situation with the the budget with the um, certain department. So full-time under um, the union is 35 hours, is that correct? Yeah, that's the question that needs to be answered. Most okay. everybody, it's a 40-hour work week. Fire's different, they have a different standard, but generally it's 40 hours. Okay, um, and so what is part-time? How many hours is part-time <laughs> under you? Is that 32? Uh, well, right now the policy in general from the Board of Selectmen with respect to positions is not to exceed 28 hours in a week. That has a tie that by law, federal law, ties to 30 hours, which is a definition under the ACA for full time. And the key function there is that if you work over 30 hours, the town is then obligated to offer insurance. And that's a trigger that we do not want to, in this case, deal with. So part timers are not to exceed 28. There are some exceptions based on contract issues myself. I'm a 32-hour-a-week mm -hmm. uh, a employee. So 
in general, it's 28 hours. Okay, that's why I, I mentioned 32, because I knew that that was your, the conditions Correct. of your, your um, contract. It is. Okay. Chairman, if I may finish. Well, oh, I thought you were finished. No. Oh, now, Tim, I, you, you defined yourself before as, was it rapid? It, was that with a Morgan P or a D? A Morgan. Rapid. Rapid. I could be <laughs> rabbit. I could be rabbit. Yeah. I, I, wanted to, I just want to make sure we understood. Hold on, Sonny. I thought Tim was done. Go ahead, please. Um, yeah, I lost my thought. Oh, yeah. Uh, when do you anticipate the, uh, the Teamsters Union will vote on this? Uh, my understanding is they were scheduling it. So I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect by the end of the week. I had a conversation with their steward uh, yesterday, and they were okay. trying to reach out to their representative. Thank up you. In thank you. Mr. Chairman, I think it's more appropriate that we only vote on. Uh, on uh, these when the union has already done so. They've already done so on the other two, so I'm happy to vote on those. But this one, uh, we should wait on. This is to, um, to recommend him. We're not going to affect it in any way. It's as my opinion, that's it. all. Doesn't Thank you very Always much. in the minority. Okay, Tim, do you have anything? No, I'm done. Thank you. Absolutely, officially done. Okay, thank you very much. Sonny, you've, please. Uh, yeah, I'll try ahead. to remember what I wanted to ask. Uh, I'm curious, each contract, how many people in each contract, how many non-union employees, and, and the health insurance for the non-union employees. Is it the same con health care con con a choice of contracts? Is it the premium the same for non-union and There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. There are a whole bunch of questions. Yeah. Um, so let's do a global. Yeah. What we're talking about on this is the, the teamsters. teamsters. They are all union people. There are 25 employees in this unit. Um, it, you've talked about some other stuff. Are they all the same? In this unit, every contract identifies certain medical. There's variances between different unions of what they select. So we have a number of plans that are offered by the town, and folks can choose what they want. The premiums vary based on what level of plan you choose and what you're, whether you're a yeah. single family. Well, my question or was whether... The the non-union employees, the same choices and the same cost for the health insurance? In general, yes. Yeah, okay. uh, there are other things that the contracts deal with, this, right. but in general, you're, you're yes to that question. Okay. And the fire and the police, number in the contract. Again, individual units may choose different things, but the town's offerings are generally the same. Yeah, okay. Okay. All set, Sonny? Oh, no, I asked how many people in each. In this team. unit is 25. Yeah, that's the team's just... I, was I thought we would take them one at a time. Yeah, the there, yeah. we'll, we'll do them one at a time as we go through. Yeah, I'll tell you how many when I go over the next two. How's that? Okay. Okay. All right. All set, Sonny? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, David, go ahead. Just to talk about what came up last week. Okay. When the lady was speaking, she wanted another assistant or whatever, and she talked about the fact that it was a 35-hour week. She was specific that we had come up with that she really needed 40 hours. Uh, that was the discussion. And I remember... I. I said to her, I'm not going to vote for this Warren article because I think you should work 40 hours and you're telling me the Teams is only allowed to 35. If you get 40, I that particular back you. job. That, it was that, that was, important. I know, I but that was that particular job. Agreed. Right, okay. Because it, Jamie but it'd be just nice said to know all of them and he's going to get that information. But I'm we'll get it. I'm, I'm being told by Christy that the contract does not say 35. So I'll get that to you and we'll, we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Okay, David, we're, we're going to get that. That'll hopefully for uh, your Christmas stocking. Okay. So, yes, sir. That actually applied to all the employees in that office. Um, and I have gotten other people to confirm, but I'd like management to confirm it. That's why we want that Christmas present, so that we can base it on management's uh, sure. estimation. Uh, but I'm quite confident that it is not defined there as well. Um, but I look forward to the official communique on that so that we can then act accordingly. David, are you finished? I'm done, thank you. Thank you very much. And I know, Tim, you said you were done before. Um, does anybody else have anything to say about this particular thing? Seeing none, those that want to move this to recommend, please raise your hands. Every, um, we've got everyone, uh, the nays and the abstain. I abstain. Okay. So David abstained. Tim is a no. Everybody else is a yes, Barbara.